हेलो फ्रेंड्स माई सेल्फ अरबाब खान हेड ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जोग्राफी टी के कॉलेज डुमरा हूँ फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस कोबर्स व्यू ऑन माउंटेन बिल्डिंग दिस पार्टिकुलर लेक्चर इज पार्ट ऑफ योर बी ए पार्ट वन ऑनर्स सेलेबस पेपर वन ए यूनिट टू फिजिकल जोग्राफी friends i will discuss this particular lecture or i will deliver this particular lecture both in english and in hindi so that our hindi medium students can also take uh, benefit of this particular lecture uh, so first of all i will discuss this uh, lecture in english friends kober was german geologist and uh, he has written a book there about their elde in this particular book he has established a detailed and systematic relationship between geosynclines and rigid masses of continental plates and the formation of cold mountains so uh, this is also a short coming of this theory that this particular uh, theory explains the origin of cold mountains only so uh, this particular kober's geosynclinal theory is based on the contraction forces produced as a result of the cooling of the earth so kober postulated that due to gradual cooling of the earth or uh, crust the contraction takes place due to loss of energy and heat the earth surface started to contract and in kober's view point this forces of contraction of the earth lead to the horizontal movement of foreland and which in turn squeeze sediments into massive mountains so in his book he called this geosynclinal orogen and uh, he considered long and wide mobile zones of water in places of present day mountains called geosynclines or orogen and uh, this orogen was surrounded by rigid masses called cratogens or forelands uh, for example we can say that canadian shield peninsula of india etc and later uh, uh, he said that the mountains are formed out of this geosynclines so uh, we can explain the origin of western ghat and eastern ghat in uh, indian uh, peninsula by this particular theory of geosynclines so uh, there are some fundamentals of his theory and uh, first is mobile zones of water shallow water indeed uh, these bodies were of shallow water not deep water and uh, these are known as geosynclines or orogen orogen means the place of mountain bed secondly these mobile zones of uh, geosynclines were surrounded by rigid masses and these rigid masses were described by kober as cratogen or foreland so there was a deep uh, water filled shallow water filled uh, depression and that depression is known as geosyncline and this particular depression was surrounded by rigid masses 
which were known as four lane or flatter and the unfolded midget portion uh, is uh, rather hard to pronounce and it is called as Vishen Birg Vishen Birg and the marginal rings were known as Rand Ket so according to Kober the mountains of present occupied the geosynclined sites of early period so according to Kober uh, the mountains the mountain ranges which are present today these mountain ranges have occupied the uh, geosynclines and the uh, geosynclines were present prior to the formation of mountains. The geosynclines or mobile zones of water have been identified as origin by Kober and the rigid masses which surround the geosynclines are termed as cratogens. And such cratogens include the Canadian shield Baltic Shield, the Siberian Shield, Peninsular India, the Chinese Massif, the Brazilian Mass, the African Shield and the Australian and Antarctic Rigid Blocks. Kober also considered the Pacific Ocean to have been formed when the mid-Pacific geosyncline separated the North and South Pacific forelands which were later filled with water and sand. And uh, he has described uh, three stages of geocycline formation. First is lithogenesis, second is orogenesis and third is cryptogenesis. So, what is lithogenesis? So, lithogenesis is this stage is characterized, characterized by the creation, sedimentation and subsidence of geosynclines. So, in this particular stage, geosynclines have been formed. They were filled by sediments which were brought by the rivers, surrounding rivers and then due to weight of those sediments, geosynclines uh, got subsidized. After that, due to subsidize, uh, subsidence of the sediments, geosynclines started to contract. And the forelands of cratogens which were bordering geosynclines succumbed to the forces of denudation. And due to this sedimentation starts and the twin process of sedimentation and subsidence led to the increase in the thickness of deposits. So, deposits uh, uh, got thicker and thicker uh, in size and weight and this process is started. Now, second stage is orogenesis. This particular stage uh, can be termed as the stage of mountain formation or orogenesis. In this particular stage, the geosynclinal sediments are squeezed and folded into the mountains and the forelands, they also start to converge towards each other due to the forces of contraction of the earth and then the enormous compressive forces produced by these moving forelands produce contraction, squeezing and folding of sediments deposited on the geosynclinal bed and this led to the formation of parallel mountain ranges on both sides of geosynclines and these have been termed by Kober as Randicaten or marginal ranges. So, uh, by this process we can easily explain the formation of eastern and uh, western ghats because According to uh, this story, uh, these ranges have been formed on the margins of geosynclines. Also, Eurasian landmass, Australian landmass, the mountains present on uh, these landmasses can be explained by this 
particular theory. And friends, then third stage is glyptogenesis because the process which starts in orogenesis uh, now going on in this particular uh, stage and the mountains which were formed in second stage in orogenesis they start to grow in size and uh, the mountains started to ascend and the gradual ascent of the mountain ranges uh, due to the denudation process uh, by natural agents uh, starts in this particular stage. Now friends, uh, at the time of uh, the theory uh, this led to the massive debate in the geological field but there are certain shortcomings uh, which Kober was not able to explain. Uh, the first is the force of contraction uh, as uh, explained by Kober is not sufficient to cause mountain growth. So the force, the contraction force which Kober postulated in his theory was not sufficient enough to cause the uh, building of mountains on such a large scale. Another geologist says, he said only one side of the geosyncline moves, whereas the other side remains stable. Whereas in Kober's uh, theory, both sides of the geosynclines uh, started to move. Secondly, Gondwana land remained stationary. How? Gondwana land is also uh, present in that particular geosyncline. And another shortcoming is Kober's theory somehow explains the west is extending mountain, but north south extending mountain like Rockies and Andes cannot be explained on the basis of this particular So, friends. Now I am going to explain this particular theory in Hindi. Dosto, geosyncline ko Hindi mein bhu sannati kaha jata hai. Aur ye particular lecture humara Kober ke bhu sannati ke siddhaan se adharit hai. Dosto, Kober ne ye siddhaan sankuchan shakti pe diya tha. Yika ye siddhaan sankuchan shakti pe ya force of contraction se adharit hai. Aur Kober ke anusar भू सन्नति या जीव संकलन के किनारों पर स्टेबल लैंडमार्क या दृढ़ भूखंड होते हैं जिन्हें कोबर ने अग्रदेश या फोरलैंड कहा उसके बाद संकुचन से जो उत्पन्न क्षैतिज भू संचलन के कारण दोनों अग्र प्रदेश एक दूसरे की तरफ खींचते हैं मतलब आप उसको ये समझ लीजिए कि जैसे अगर हम किसी चीज को नीचे से खींचते हैं तो उसके दोनों किनारे आपस में पास आते हैं और ये जो अग्र प्रदेश जब एक दूसरे की तरफ खींचते हैं तो जो भू सन्नति की जो मलबे हैं उन पर मोड़ पड़ता है और इन्हीं मोड़ों के द्वारा जो पर्वत श्रेणियां हैं उनका निर्माण होता है तो जो दोनों किनारों पर जो संख्याएंगे या भू सन्नति के जो दोनों किनारों पर जो पर्वत श्रेणियां हैं जो उनका निर्माण हुआ उन्हें कोबर ने रैंड केटेन नाम जो किनारे के जो पर्वत श्रेणिया उत्पन्न हुए उसके बाद कोबर कहते हैं कि जब संपीड़न शक्ति सामान्य होती है तो केवल किनारे वाले भाग पर ही मोड़ पड़ता है एवं बीच का जो भाग है भू सन्नति का वो बिना मुड़े हुए ही ऊपर उठ जाता है और इस वलन से अप्रभावित भाग को कोबर ने मध्य पिंड या मेडियन मास कहा और इसको कोबर ने श्वासिन वर्ग की संज्ञा दी और इसका उदाहरण जैसे आप देख सकते हैं कि कार्पेथियन और डायनारिक्स डिनारिक्स रेडियो के बीच उसके हंगरी का जो मैदान है वो इसका बेस्ट एग्जांपल है इसी तरह हिमालय और तिब्बत के बीच स्थित तिब्बत का जो पठार है वो भी मीडियन मास का एग्जांपल है उत्तरी अमेरिका में सेरा नेवादा एवं वसाच रेडियो के बीच स्थित नेवादा का जो बेसिन बेंचेस है वो भी मेडियन मास का एग्जाम्पल है और एटलस पैरनीज 
खिलाड़ियों के लिए जो मध्य सागर का भाग है वो भी इसका एक जाता है उसी तरह एल्बूस और जैग्रोस के बीच में जान का जो पठार है वो भी मध्य प्रदेश का और उसके बाद कोबर ने यह कहा कि जब संपीड़नात्मक शक्ति अधिक तीव्र हो जाती है तो जो दोनों अग्र प्रदेश और फोर लैंड है वो एक दूसरे के एकदम संपर्क में आ जाते हैं इसके फलस्वरूप जो मध्य पिंड होता है थोड़े तो मीडियम मास होते हैं वो अनुपस्थित हो जाते हैं और इस प्रकार जो जटिल पर्वतमाला उपस्थित होती है उसको हम नॉर्वे कहते हैं तो दोस्तों ये जो सिंक्लाइनल थ्योरी कोबर की जो है उसको हम लोगों ने जाना आशा करता हूँ कि ये पार्टिकुलर लेक्चर आप लोगों के लिए काफ़ी लाभदायक सिद्ध हुआ होगा अपने अगले लेक्चर में हम और सिद्धांत जो माउंटेन बिल्डिंग है उसको डिस्कस